sometimes it's too close. <clears throat> yeah, let's get going. What's, what's the hold up? Call order the Spark City Council meeting of 828-2017. Mayor Martini? <coughs> Here. Council members Abbott? Here. Lawson? Here. Smith? Here. Bybee? Here. Deer? Here. Acting City Attorney Eiding? Here. And City Manager Driscoll? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Next is opening ceremony. We have invocation speaker, Pastor Barb West. Smart Church. Excuse me, I won't be able to stand. I'm sorry. I'll make up twice. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to come to your throne of grace with Pastor Gino and this fine council. We just ask you, Lord, even as you've instructed us, that you would depart wisdom to us and enable them to know exactly what all is going on in your mind so that they would be in one accord. We pray, Lord, that as they lead the business of our city, that you would guide them, direct them, protect them, and enable them to uh, make good choices for all of us. We thank you, too, for all of the elected and appointed officials in our city. Thank you that we're a city on the move and that things are uh, building and going so well. Thank you for all of the construction, and we pray people would have patience with all of that. Thanks for our police force and our first responders and our firefighters who put themselves on the line for us each day. And so now, Lord, we just ask that you would hear our prayer and be with us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Was that a, a sign, Barb? That must have been. That's a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you'd remain standing for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, Ms. Bybee, would you lead us? It's an honor. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> now we have public comment is the next. If you want to speak under number four public comment, please fill out one of these cards and give it to our clerk. And we'll go right down the line as we received them, and you'll have each have three minutes. I have Hannah Hobyar. Come on up. How do you pronounce that? Who we are? Okay. Go ahead, have a seat, and uh, go ahead. You got three minutes, dear. Um. So my name is Hannah Hubiar. I have a nonprofit called Project Bear Hugs. I am currently doing a drive, um, donation drive for all the victims of the Texas, um, the hurricane right now, as well as Louisiana and the um, states around that that have been affected by any sort of disaster. Um. I have a big drive happening on this Thursday at the Atlantis from 11 to 7, and we are collecting any sort of donation, um, new or gently used stuffed animals, blankets, pillows, pillowcases, water, pet food, any sort of thing that um, people need that, I mean, money is helps a lot, but they also need the stuff that happens um, that they don't get after everyone leaves. So um, if the city of Asparis can get behind us, that would be fantastic um, I'm trying to make this the biggest drive that I can I am partnering with Red, um, the American Red Cross on Thursday we're doing a combined donation drive uh, which I'm really excited about and I don't know if you guys have seen I'm sure you guys have the hurricane in Texas is absolutely horrific um, I've been doing this for a long time I've never seen a storm like this and it is horrific there's over 30,000 people in a shelter right now there's over 10,000 people stuck on the roofs of their house and they cannot get down and they are camping up there. They're having to keep an ax with them if they're in the attic so that they, they can um, basically ax their way out of the house, um, out of the roof. And they're now in such um, desperate need that they there's not enough people to get them off of the roof. Um, so there's been people there for a day and a half um, is the longest that I've heard that they have not had any sort of contact with anybody there's no phone service no power no gas no food nothing um, and as I heard about 20 minutes ago is that the levees are about to break so yeah everyone is asked to please leave their homes they're in um, 
They had Sugarland, Texas, Corpus Christi, which I, that one's, um, they've been supposed to leave for a while now, and pretty much all the surrounding areas. So, yeah. Questions for Hannah Ronsman. Yeah, and what's the number they can get a hold of your organization? Uh, you can get a hold of me at 775-750-0537. Project Bear Hugs. Uh, www.projectbearhugs.com. Anyone else? And you said all day at the Atlantis on Thursday? Yes, from 11 to 7 in the west parking lot, so the one right across the street. And you can bring anything that you, they think would be helpful yes. or a lot of money? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and thank you very much for doing what you're doing. I know they're, they're in such need down there and it's just a horrible I watch it on TV at nighttime it's just horrible you're right there's no, and we all know around here how devastating water can be and it's nothing even close to what's happening down there so uh, open your hearts open your wallets and let's try to help those folks out thanks thanks Anna. okay next I have Kathleen Shoup come on Kathleen welcome Hello to all. Um, my name is Kathleen Shupp, and I live on the east side of the Wild Creek Golf Course. I'm here to represent the Save Wild Creek um, movement. My, I truly feel that this whole project is more a ruse to get that valuable a asset away from our public so that they can develop it into something other than just a high school. From um, my viewpoint, I saw that it was sprung upon us three and a half months ago, four months ago, perhaps, and uh, had a completion date that was supposedly to take place um, in August, on August 1st. So they gave nobody time to even check into alternative plans. Um, it, it about 2005 there were some developers that tried to move into the Wild Creek Golf Course and, and turn it into high density housing and we fought them off um, the zoning and and all sorts of things were against them so we were able to do that but now they found a way around that zoning they found that by making it a high school which is zoned that they can break up that property and then then what okay 80 80 acres of the 212 available might be turned into that high, that high school and then what's going to happen to the rest are they going to turn it over to the city of sparks are you guys going to finance all these these wonderful utopian ideas that they have with the the uh, uh, walking paths and the swimming pools and all these embellishments to make that high school look good are you all going to pay for it? Are we all, as as uh, as uh, the public, going to pay with our taxes? I, d I don't know. Um, I, I rather doubt it. I think that they're going to turn it over into development. And uh, so I, I hate seeing these sneaky people get their way. I'm sorry. Thank you for listening. <coughs> Bill Wagner? Wagner, Wainer? Come on up, sir. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Opposed to the rezoning of PCN 170-0032 on Los Altos Parkway. I just don't understand why you would put six acres of building on a 7.7 .7 acre land. My biggest concern is fire and evacuation, and believe me, if it ever snowed up there during that time it would be a disaster and I want you to please remember that 
the city council unanimously disagreed with the rezoning. So I hope you'll take all this into effect when the time comes. I know the next reading will be in the next, uh, I think on what, the 15th is it? Will be the first reading, September. on this particular project that is being discussed in this public comment and has asked for a 60-day extension in order to bring a consultant on board to try to answer some more questions from the public. So instead of the public hearing process happening during the month of September, it will be happening during the month of November. We will be sending information out of the mailings that we had done in the past for the public hearings. Um, we're we're um, going to actually have a mailing that goes out and explains that this is a 60-day delay. This is a uh, common practice for the city um, working with um, the applicants when there are issues that be going. So the public hearing that the gentleman was talking about for September will be delayed until November. It will be back all public hearings again. Any final decision will be made by this council. So we're not short, we're not circumventing the system. We're just allowing the developers 60 days to answer questions. Thank you. Meet again. <clears throat> Danielle Mestri. property that's going to be built on Los Altos Parkway. That's my issue. Um, I would like you to know that on disk drive, I'm sure you all know, there are apartment complexes already being built, that there's about 20 of them, and they're three stories high. So other than putting something where there doesn't really need to be put, I think there are plenty. I, I've heard constantly, well, we're growing and, and we have to, we can't meet the demand. I've gone around the city and all of those things that the last lady had talked about in 2005 when everything stopped is started up again. And it seems like on a faster scale. So everything that's over by the marina, those apartments are going in. You have the apartments that are already over by the nugget. You have the hotel that was turned into a apartment complex. You have the, the other property that's over by the RV park by the marina that's going to be apartment complexes. We already have existing apartment complexes. So my concern is that you have enough. And I know there's this urgency to fill whatever we stopped doing in 2005. But I think it's time you guys take a little look and slow it down. Whether these developers are promising the moon, my kids go to school in a school that's going to be filled to the capacity over on Los Altos at Bud Beasley because of a 64 unit complex. And it doesn't stop there because once those houses behind us start going in, it will continue there too. So I think looking to the future and whoever you think that you're getting in here into these apartment complexes, in five years if they all leave, we're the ones left with what with empty empty places. We've all gone through a recession. We want our house values to go up and not go back down again. And piling all these people in here, you eventually will lead to people leaving. So that's what I got to say. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie Griffin. Uh, I'm Wesley Griffin. I'm here to uh, speak in support of Saving Well Creek. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, heard all the reasons that we feel like it should be saved. We've talked about <clears throat> Well Creek being a, a floodplain. We've talked about the flight path, the traffic problems. We've talked about <clears throat> what a tremendous public asset that is. Uh, to, the cost to replace that asset uh, would be upwards of $30 million. Uh, we had Paul McKenzie at one of our groups recently, and he said that um, uh, a recent uh, uh, refurbishment of a, of a golf course up at uh, Lake Tahoe was like $46 million. So now, 
where where could you uh, hide your citizens <clears throat> with a thirty million dollar public asset for one point four million dollars? That's what's owed on it, and then that will be a free and clear public asset that will actually make money and provide our citizens with with recreation, with a green space, with just all kinds of, of uh, part of our culture. Been around here for going on 40 years. In our meetings, we've been brainstorming on ways to accomplish this. Uh, one of the recent meetings that uh, one of your members here, Ed, was at, uh, he brought up, he says, you know, we ought to be thinking about when, when, when. I'm sure you all remember uh, Colbert Bailey, uh, Stephen Covey's uh, uh, book called uh, How to Win Friends, uh, no, no. <laughs> The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. <laughs> and the fourth habit that he spoke of there was win-win. Uh, well, here we're talking win-win-win because we have at least three entities involved. We have the citizens of Washoe County, we have the school district, and you have the RSCVA. When there's a conflict like this, if people start thinking win-win or win-win-win, as the case may be, there's tremendous opportunities. Tremendous opportunity. We can save an asset to our community, a park, a golf course. We're going to need more golf courses. Uh, in the paper this morning, uh, they're talking about almost 30,000 new jobs coming into our area. We're going to need more golf courses. We're going to need more public green spaces. Where can you do that for $1.4 million? We need this. We need this. And we're, uh, we're, we're looking at, at different, we're, we're looking to try to bring different people in and, and talk about ways that we can work on win-win solutions. We're going to have the school board. We've had the school board there. We would invite all of you to come to our meetings. Come and talk with us. Come and hear what we have to say. We have some ideas. I was just up to uh, the Wild Creek Regional Park today. 250 acres of undeveloped land up there. Now, I don't know, you know all the ins and outs or the workings of that, but it would seem to me that undeveloped acreage, I don't know what it's worth, worth $30 million, would be a good place to maybe consider that high school. And there's a number of other places that we can look at. Come join us and let's talk about it. Thank you. <clears throat> Put my glasses on. William Gilbert, a.k.a. Benjamin W. Kreveling IV. Yeah. Come on up, sir. You have three minutes. Uh, hello. Um, I'm here because of the history on the planning units, of the 47 planning units. Uh, that, um, that's going to uh, – it affects us, too, because um, we're – that's you know, we got to work together with the Shasta County um, Air – and uh, it's uh, throughout 2005 um, and, er and early parts of 2006, the Stewardship Council focuses on obtaining, organizing, organizing and uh, analyzing uh, sufficient amounts of data uh, s specified in the watershed lands to, uh, to proceed um, efficiency. Uh, we're uh, grouped uh, the 140 or 142,690. About uh, 1,000 percent in, in total um, into 47 planning units, uh, which then uh, would be developed, um, described as an as in um, stocks. So each planning unit is one stock, and that one stock is a uh, has a tickler, you know, code. And there's, each stock has got like billions of dollars in, into this, and so we develop um, 40, this 47 planning units is quite a few. Um, Units that we got to get going to planning, you know. But um, for the start, you know, um, there can be ward, ward one, ward two, you know, as a start. In you know, in one planning unit is, is like I said, is a stock fund of the Great West, and uh, and just just that one unit and that one stock is a lot of paperwork and not paperwork, but for one of you guys to look into, which would bring you know a lot of money into our watershed planning unit, and. Uh, <clears throat> And so forth. Um, so today, um, I uh, was able to fax to the um, Utilities Commission and and uh, and Carson City the um, the plans and uh, update of the uh, uh, which the PG&E you know company 
um, was was to talk to uh, the utilities commission, yeah, utilities, because that's pretty much the our communication and the the data and you know, um, uh, so to speak, uh, like uh, you know, stack like how stack how data is stacked, and then like um, there's like it's in a row of, like is it say a court date? It'd be like it's like before the Indians uh, commission um, form is where the, uh, the court dates are. It would be laid out, but it's stacked like, like right after another, and then times all there and so forth. Um, so pretty much, uh, uh, I got like probably like 600 different folders of data made up that I've been working for for a good five years, and um, <clears throat> and Spanish Springs Construction, um, they uh, they are able to bring the bring it to the table, the uh, all the you know or bring it up to the table with all the um, the the stocks. Of the Great West, which um, turned into the empowerment, which empowerment uh, went to the David Bacon pension, and so we those are the two companies that have the, the recent data that you, you speak to, and uh, and then I with the Great West has the um, the the remaining of uh, you know the 15 year da uh, data within the you know 15 years all the way back you know from uh, from one you know Harris stocks so. Um, Okay, that's it. Pretty much it's start. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else wants to speak? Please fill out one of the cards. Okay. <clears throat> Seeing no more public comment, we'll move on to the agenda. Uh, anybody want to take anything out of order? If not, looking for a motion. Mr. Smith? Move to approve the agenda. Mr. Abbott? Moved by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Abbott to approve the agenda as outlined by staff. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> minutes. Consideration and possible approval of the minutes of the irregular Spark City Council meeting of August 14, 2014. Any omissions, deletions, or corrections? I move to approve the minutes from the August 14, 2017 City Council meeting. Mr. Baer. I second that. Announcements, we have none. Consent items, anybody want to pull a consent item? Okay, seeing no consent items being pulled, uh, looking for a motion. Mr. Smith. Move to approve consent items 8.1 through 8.3. Do a second? Ms. Bybee. Second. Move, moved by Mr. Smith, second by Ms. Bybee to approve it. On to general business consideration of and possible approval of the mayor's recommendation of the appointment of Shelley Reed. Shelley who? Shelley Reed to the Sparks Planning Commission for the remainder of a four year term from the following pool of applicants listed in alphabetical order Jeff Bowling, Joshua Fink, Paul Freeman, Joshua Lee, Jennifer Martinez, and Shelley, Shelley Reed, of course. Uh, discussion? Questions? Ms. Bybee. Ready for a motion? I can do that too. I move to confirm the appointment of Ms. Shelley Reed to the Sparks Planning Commission for the remainder of a four year term through December 31st, 2018. Mr. Lawson. <laughs> we have a motion, motion by Ms. Bybee, seconded by Mr. Lawson to approve Shelley Reed as a new planning commissioner. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passes unanimously. Come on up, Shelley, for a minute, say a couple words. You know, Shelley's been around for, for some time now, and, and she was asking me a long time ago, how do I get on a commission or a board? And I said, well, if you hang around us long enough, you'll get point, appointed to something, which is not true. She's very, very well-rounded in her education and what she's done in the past in the city of Sparks. And, uh, Shelly, I believe you'll do a great, great job on the Planning Commission. We're looking forward to working with you. So say a few words, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council members, uh, for this opportunity. I'm very honored, and it's my privilege to serve this community that I love so much. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, any questions from anybody? Any questions? Yeah. 
Okay, let's move on to 9.2 consideration of demand letter from Omar Rosales and possible action to settle claim against city in the amount of not to exceed in insurance policy limits. Mr. Thornley. Our members of the council, Doug Thornley. Well, that's generally a good sign, isn't it? <laughs> As you mentioned, this is a this is a, a council request to make a decision on a demand letter from a plaintiff's attorney on behalf of a man named Omar Rosales. His claim involves the failure of a concrete utility pull box and a sidewalk uh, along Victorian Avenue during rib cook-off in 2015. The city attorney's office review of the claim uh, leads us to recommend that the council deny the, the request. That's it. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them. I don't know. Okay, questions for Doug? Mr. Lawson. I'm going to recuse myself from this uh, item because the lawyer for the plaintiff is someone I have a consultation with tomorrow, and we may be employing him to represent my wife. So I would better I just stay away from this item altogether. I'll make a motion based on <coughs> to reject Omar Rosales's demand of the city of Sparks policy limit of $1 million per occurrence and a $5 million umbrella. Mr. Dare. I second that motion. Moved by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Dare to decline uh, uh, item 9.2, Mr. Rosales's demand letter. Uh, any questions for the discussion? Seeing none, please vote. <clears throat> Passes four to one with one abstention. Thank you, Mr. Thornley. Do not come back ever again, okay? 9.3, discussion and possible direction to the city manager to negotiate and prepare a disposition and development agreement with Silver Wing Development for the pro prospective sale and redevelopment of C Street parking facility property located at 955 C Street and having assessor's parcel number Good afternoon, Mayor Martini, members of the City Council. I'm Armando Ornelas, the Assistant Community Services Director. Uh, Silverwing Development, which is led by Mr. Jay Witt, is requesting a Disposition and Development Agreement, a DDA, uh, in order to continue pursuing a proposed project for and the acquisition of the parking structure property located at 955 C Street. I have that graphic, please. Uh, the, uh, the, on the graphic up on the screen, uh, the, the garage is uh, on, the, on the north side of that, uh, that parcel. It is located uh, basically uh, just one block east of Pyramid uh, on, on C Street. Uh, it, it was built in 1988, so it's approaching 30 years of age, uh, and it has 341 parking spaces in it. Uh, this agenda item asks the City Council to direct the City Manager to proceed with negotiating and preparing for future consideration by the Redevelopment Agency and the City Council an agreement with Silverwing Development for the sale and redevelopment of this property. Silverwing's preliminary proposal for the property is to retain the existing parking structure but add another parking level, uh, a podium, and then five stories of apartments totaling approximately 175 units on top of that. So it, uh, the end result would be a 10-story structure. Sure, I apologize for going through it so quickly. Uh, basically, it'd be, they'd be looking at retaining the existing structure, adding another deck of parking, and then a podium above that, on which, which would serve as the, you know, essentially the, the, the base for uh, five stories of apartments on top. And so the, uh, the, the project would be in total about 10 stories and would contain 175 uh, apartments, approximately. Sure. Um, Basically, what's being contemplated is that in, in exchange in, uh, uh, for the garage and, and, and what would be the compensation for uh, the, uh, the, the city or the redevelopment agency would be a, a long-term lease uh, for a certain number of, of spaces in that garage that would be available for the public's use. So uh, we don't have that number yet. Uh, it would be something that would be worked out in this period if you give the manager direction to proceed on, to work on this DDA. Uh, but that is what that's would be is being contemplated and basically the value of the lease hold on those spaces and the, the developer would be responsible for all maintenance on that 
uh, on the on those spaces. Um, a DDA, you know, they're all they're all a little different, uh, but they all share some similarities. And so the DDA would be expected to address uh, topics that in, uh, include but are not limited to compensation for the property. So that would be based on um, a summary and review appraisals. And if as if as contemplated, the compensation is to take the form of a long-term or permanent access for the public of parking spaces in the garage, then the DDA that we would bring you would have to specify the terms. Uh, for those spaces in terms of the city's right to use the parking. Uh, possible modifications to the boundaries of the property, as you are aware uh, in, in the uh, previous projects that we have done in Victorian Square with uh, Silver Wing Development, we've had to do easements, um, you know, boundary line adjustments, et cetera. So we don't know necessarily that that would be the case here, but it's, it, if there are any to be that will be necessary, then we would address them in the DDA. Uh, the, uh, the DDA would uh, identify what the roles and responsibilities would be uh, of each of the parties regarding the mitigation of any environmental issues if, if they should arise. We don't know that they, they would, uh, but again, we have to anticipate the possibility. Uh, the term of the proposed DDA and performance schedules for each of the parties. Uh, the developer's conditions precedent, and conditions precedent essentially are the developer's conditions to, that, that have to be satisfied before they would agree to you know, take the property. And then conversely, uh, the DDA would specify uh, any city and agency conditions proceeding, and those would be the conditions that the agency and the city would want to see satisfied before you, we actually uh, close on the sale of the property. And they could include, uh, you know, we'd want to have, basically what we're trying to do with the agency's conditions proceeding would be to, um, you know, reduce to the extent possible the, the possibility that you know we we sell the property and then and then the project doesn't proceed so we would be looking to make sure that the project is, is as well understood as possible so we would be looking for the project to have an entitlement uh, we would be looking for uh, performa development and operating budgets that demonstrate that the project is feasible uh, and we would be looking for financing commitments for construction of the proposed project so that's sort of a, a short list of what would be addressed in the DDA again once we're into it, you know, that's subject to change. So uh, the reason this item is on the city council meeting agenda rather than on the redevelopment agency agenda is that uh, this property is owned by the city of Sparks. Now, it's, it's um, in all likelihood, this has uh, been transferred originally from the agency to the city. We'll do that research as, as part of uh, the work we will do in, in the coming months. Um, but, um, at this time, it is it is owned by the city of Sparks. So, um, if the city council today directs uh, the city manager to proceed with the pursuit of this DDA, uh, one of the steps that would have to occur before we can bring you the DDA, or be, certainly before you could approve the DDA, would be that the city would have to transfer uh, title to the agency because the agency can dispose of the, of the of property in a manner that the city uh, can't necessarily. So, uh, per NRS 279-432. You know, it's, it's clear that the city may dedicate, sell, convey, or lease any of its property to a redevelopment agency to aid redevelopment. Once a draft DDA has been prepared, it would be brought to the city council and the agency uh, for approval or for consideration. Since the DDA would represent the agency's conditional agreement to sell Silver Wing the property, it would be at that point that we would uh, need to uh, do the, um, uh, the public hearing where um, you know you would consider the actual disposition of the property, and uh, when the agency is disposing of property, then the city council has to give its consent per pertinent Nevada redevelopment law. So those public hearings will occur, and you know any you know will be uh, notifying property owners, and so anyone who may have any concerns about the disposition of the garage, you know would have that, their opportunity to address the council at that point. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, Mr. Witt is in the audience if you wish to hear from him or have questions for him. Uh, let's open it up for questions from the council, and then we'll get Mr. Witt down here to say a few words and uh, go from there, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> How many parking spaces do we have there now? Uh, we have 341 spaces. How many added parking space with that the new floor? Well, it would be, uh, there's approximately 70 to 80 spaces, depending on the on the handicap spacing per per floor. Um, so we you would assume approximately that more spaces. Over 400, we'd have. Yeah, I mean there 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 is some discussion potentially at looking at. Added that way, 
Uh, we don't know whether that you know that makes sense or not. We'll look at it as part of the process, but that's what we're looking at approximately. Councilman Smith. My, my only concern is with 175 additional units, as we know in the past, that could mean 250 cars. So what we are looking at, uh, uh, Councilman Smith, is um, making sure that the that this project is is parked not just to code, but uh, as necessary to satisfy its demand for parking. Uh, and then looking at having some, some number of spaces in that uh, garage that would be available uh, for public parking, uh, most particularly to serve you know those businesses that have relied on that garage historically on those two blocks on, on Victorian Avenue. Uh, but you know we are looking that, at that in the context of uh, the overall uh, parking in that area. Uh, you know we have uh, um, we had a traffic consultant do a parking analysis for all of the Victorian Square area, and we will be addressing that with you or reviewing that with you when we when we bring a DDA to you, if that's in fact what we do. And, and I know we'll have plenty of parking there, just the only time it's full is when we have a special event down there. Otherwise, there's there's plenty of parking spaces, but uh, I'm watching that guy up there in the back because he's, he's sneaky. He's, uh, <laughs> he's sneaky good, and uh, every project he's building uh, is absolutely fantastic. So thank you. Mr. Derek. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty exciting what's happening down there, and I think the idea of a larger structure that goes up only adds to our downtown. It will, I think it will add the, the flavor of what we're looking for. One of my biggest concerns actually have to do with right now communication to the businesses. I've actually spoken to a few of them, and they've only heard rumors of what's happening. What are we doing now to communicate? Maybe, maybe Mr. Witt actually has an answer to that. Maybe he's doing something. But even the fact that we're talking all about it, some of them, one of the bars was – Oh no! You're going to shut that down. I'm on. I, and I, I said what I could to, to, to whatever. But I do think these businesses are watching and hearing things, and I just want to make sure. What are we doing to help make sure they understand that we one is not shutting down their parking, but all that kind of stuff. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Steve Driscoll for the record. <coughs> so this is kind of the first step about communications. One, until we have a development agreement that has us starting to negotiate the fine points, there really isn't anything to talk about except rumor, if you will. So if the council approves this today, communications with adjacent landowners becomes part of the negotiations and the plan and to make sure that we're providing information timely to those who are a party to what's going on. And so the fact that nothing's happening until now is because we don't have anything to talk about. Um, we have uh, a couple of wonderful concepts um, that, have, that are working on different pieces of property down there. Once we get to this particular piece of having a DDA in place, that changes the game and it changes our responsibilities to the adjacent property owners. So um, depending on your action today will depend on what the next step is. Communication will be one of the largest parts of it. Uh, Mr. Witt, can you come down maybe real quick? <clears throat> I just want to make a comment that uh, I believe I'm the only one left other than maybe Mr. Driscoll and Teresa and maybe Mr. Smith was here, I don't remember, but they talked originally about what was going to go on down there and everybody talked about it needs to be high. It needs to be many, many stories. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. I mean, it's high-rise construction, which is a different code. Um, it requires, you know, basically a 300-foot span crane, uh, which is three to 5,000 a day through the life of the project. Uh, so there's a lot of other issues. Uh, but that being said, I go back to your, your original comments, which are absolutely accurate, which is, you know, what is the one thing if you want if you have a you have a defined area that you want to uh, you want to create 
um, a downtown and an existence in a and a really a you know outstanding place to, to either visit or live. Uh, density is 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 the driver of all those things. With density, uh, we get to things like um, an urban grocery store, an urban drug. We get we get to more um, retail options. Uh, we already have actually a number of very interesting parties interested in the bridges and fountain house two retail areas. So um, you know, more we, we could drive that, and that we could also drive a higher quality tenant. Um, and, and and with this project, we also bi uh, bifurcate the market a bit in that, you know, we're not going after the same type of tenant on all these projects. This project, you're really going to start up at the fifth level, which is going to have two uh, decks looking south um, over the garage of the Nugget. So you have unobstructed views to the south. So you're taking advantage of the basically the whole Sierra front on your views. Um, that that works also for the, for the common area, the outdoor space, and kind of the higher end units we could put in here. So we're actually trying to graduate a little bit to a, to a different type of um, to, um, a tenant in this this development. I criticize anybody. I didn't mean. I, no, no, no. I understand. I, I, I'm just saying when, when you when you go up, you know, when you get when you're pregnant on one building going up, when you when you do Fountain House, which was uh, ten buildings and Clubhouse, and the market collapsed after building three, you you could stop at that point and wait for the market to come back. When you go when you when you move on this project, you're all in. Yeah. So the risk the risk level is a lot higher. You're also carrying your debt for a lot longer before you're able to occupy. You because we need as as the uh, as um, as uh, Fire Marshal King will, will tell you, um, we will need, we'll need a CO on the entire entire building before the first party can occupy, uh, not just a building, but the entire buildings. And, uh, so it, it, it's a different it's a different dynamic um, that we're bringing to the to the marketplace. Uh, I'm excited about it. I think we're trying to basically again offer uh, uh, a different type of product for the, for folks to to live and and enjoy that area. Um, and we are considering, uh, to, to your point, um, uh, Councilman Dehar, um, you know, we will be talking to the, uh, when we, I actually had a meeting with Councilman Abbott earlier, uh, we will be talking to the lo local merchants, but as um, City Manager said, uh, that would be a little, bit, a little bit cart before the horse since we hadn't had this discussion yet before you. So uh, that, that obviously is in my plan, um, but you know, it just hasn't taken place, place yet. I applaud you, sir, for uh, taking a chance on Sparks because th this is risky business. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt about that. But thank you so much for making the investment that you're making now and uh, are going to in the future. I'm pretty sure. So uh, discussions are ongoing for what's going to happen in the future. Uh, I can't see this being any anything but the best place to be in the next four or five years. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful place to live. Not only live, but come down and, and recreate. You. That's certainly my vision. on the parking if you've gone to any other uh, regional cities maybe directly to the west of us finding parking is <laughs> dang near impossible <laughs> a little closer west sparks but uh, yeah finding parking is horrendous if you want to go down and have a meal or catch a movie or anything in, in downtown Reno so Parking is crucial to everything we're doing in downtown Sparks. So thank you for keeping that up. But I'm going to hold your feet to the fire on the. I, I know you will. And you're, and you're a lot bigger than me, so um, I, I respect that. Um, and, and it, Put some motorcycle parking. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, right. In that regard, though, I, I would I would also ask you all as we go through these um, um, with staff that we not just look at the individual project but the overall game plan for that area and what it can accomplish um, by example if we do move to, to the next area which is along the promenade you know our game plan there is to basically go down an entire level underneath your promenade and put an underground garage in there and then build that promenade back up on top with the building so you won't see the parking but that we'll be adding more parking actually more than we need in that area so to give a little fluff for for retail needs, so um, you know it's 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 really some of the parts we have to be thinking of the the entire area when we're doing these doing these the designs. Yeah, definitely will be. Yep, 
Thank you. Um, Jay, I just want to applaud you for your vision on uh, Victorian Square as we're creating this district. Um, as a council member and chair of the redevelopment agency, really, you know, my focus on downtown and the priority for all of us on creating a downtown, uh, we get to build it. I tell people that we're building it from the ground up, which is super exciting. We're not taking an older part of town and trying to renovate. Uh, we're building and creating it, and you're doing a lot of that. And, and I like this project in particular because it is going up and um, looking at the, the design, um, the Art Deco type style, the lighting, I think. Sure, you're lighting. Giving away all the <laughs> secrets I haven't released yet. Yeah, the architectural <laughs> style <laughs> and the lighting. And lighting, you know, lighting has been a huge thing uh, in your other properties right. and our tree lighting and just kind of uh, creating this whole district so that people, when they come down here, they know they're in a special district. And it's also making this product will add a di different dimension. So it won't look like every building downtown is the same, that each one is unique and creates like uh, more visual interest and uh, adds to the, you know, to the beauty of downtown. I'm excited of what, what, what we will see, especially in the next five years. You Thank know, you. To see what that is the created. goal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Abbott. <clears throat> I just want to second everyone else. That's a great idea. I think it's going to be a a good use would be interesting to see the DDA and I'd like to make a motion if we don't have any more comments. Um, I move to direct the city manager to negotiate and prepare for future consideration by the agency and city council a proposed uh, 2017 DDA with Silverwing development for the sale and redevelopment of the C Street parking facility property. Second. Moved by Mr. Abbott, seconded by Ms. Bybee to approve agenda item 9.3 as outlined by staff. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Hello, anybody home? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, good luck, Mr. Witt. You won't need it. You, you, you do a hell of a job. Pick all the luck you want to give me. Thank you. Move on to 9.4, consideration possible approval of an interlocal agreement AC 539999 between the City of Reno on behalf of the Reno Police Department, Washoe County on behalf of the Washoe County Sheriff's Office, and City of Sparks on behalf of the Sparks Police Department. For the management and disposition of 2017 Justice Assistant Grant, JAG. Program award in the amount of $26,234. Chief Allen, go for it. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Um, it's a little bit different than we've done in the past. Over the last couple of years, I would just come to you saying that we have received $26,000 approximately dollars through the JAG funding. The federal government has changed their application process slightly um, to where they want the interlocal agreement and some assurances that the city attorney has already signed off on um, as part of the grant application process. So to remind you of uh, well, the process, we'll go through today and if approved, we'll actually apply for the grant. Uh, we have once again determined that working in the collaborative uh, partnership with Reno and Washoe County, um, that we will get the most funds than doing uh, or applying for these funds as an independent entity. So every year we look at that as a region, figure out which way we are going to get the most money um, using the JAG funds. And once again, this is the interlocal that's before you, allowing the city of Reno to manage the grant funds, of which um, our portion is approximately $26,234. So what we have before you is an interlocal that I've already signed, the assurances that the city uh, attorney has signed, and then just with your approval, the mayor will sign, and then we will move forward with the grant process, and I'll come back before you uh, at a later time to, to formally accept the grant. Thanks, Chief. Questions for the Chief? Mr. Dare. Not a question. I just moved to approve it. I think it's fantastic to work together. Good job on that. I know. How long have we been doing that? It's been a long time. Long time. I, well, you're, you're I, before I was in the roles that I was in, that, that now I say it's me been going this. on for quite some time. So, so I, at least for at least 10, 15 years, I know that for a fact. I move to accept and approve the interlocal agreement with the City of Reno, Washoe County, and the City of Sparks for the management and disposition of the 2017 Justice Assistant Grant Program Award, in the amount of twenty-six thousand two hundred thirty-four dollars. Second, <clears throat> Mr. Abbott. We have a motion by Mr. Dare, seconded by Mr. Abbott, to approve nine point four. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. 
passes unanimously. Thanks, Chief. Appreciate it. 9.5, consideration, discussion, and possible adoption of a business impact statement, AC5400, regarding resolution number 3317, amending and updating fees charged by the fire department of the city of Sparks for certain fire in inspections, reinspections, fire suppressions, and fire prevention services. Mr. King. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Robert King, fire marshal for the record. Uh, next month, I'll be before you to talk about fun stuff like the pancake breakfast and fire prevention week and golf fundraiser efforts and everything we have. But today is uh, something that's a little little different, um, but but needed. So, and I heard your conversation earlier about glasses. This is uh, actually the first time that I'm coming up to a presentation where I'm having to put readers on as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Uh, as mentioned, you have before you today a consideration to adopt a business impact statement regarding a new resolution, number 3317, amending and updating our existing fees charged for fire inspections, reinspections, fire suppression, and prevention services. A little background on this the Fire Prevention Bureau's fee schedule was created in 1999 to cover the cost of services to hire one additional fire inspector. To this end, Council passed Resolution 2578 on July 8, 1999, and Resolution 2735 on June 25, 2001, establishing and amending fees charged by the Sparks Fire Department. The Fire Prevention Bureau fee schedule has not been adjusted or increased since 2001. Since 2002, the Fire Department has averaged about $79,000 in inspection fee revenue per year which is insufficient to cover the current cost of the fire inspector two position paid for by these fees. So in May of 2017, uh, council approved uh, fiscal year 18 budget, which included an increase of $60,000 in fire department fees for the fiscal year. So from May to June 2017, I was tasked to conduct a kind of a statewide comparison of inspection fees to see what's going on out there. The study demonstrated that the fees charged by Sparks Fire Department for fire inspection services were still well below the state average of about $80 per hour. The proposed fees accurately account for an inspector's time at $65 an hour. The addition of an operational permit fees required that's required by the fire code will also offset the actual cost of conducting fire inspections for specialized processes that take more time to review and, and inspect. Depending on the size of business, some fees increased while others actually decreased. And that's in your packet where you can see that in, in the fee chart. The proposed fees are estimated to cover the annual cost to pay for that one Fire Inspector 2 position as originally it intended under resolutions 2578 and 2735. So pursuant to NRS 237.090, a business impact statement is, is required. From June to July 2017, I sent the proposed fee adjustment information to Economic Development Authority of Western Nevada, EDON, Citizens, uh, Sparks Citizens Advisory Council, and the Reno Sparks Chamber of Commerce to solicit their input regarding the fee adjustments. On June 29, 2017, a notice was also placed in the Reno Gazette Journal. I received and responded to four comments from EDON, which is indicated in the, in the business impact statement report that you have. So with that, I'm looking for your consideration to adopt the business impact statement, and we'll hopefully be able to answer any of your questions. Questions for Chief King? Sir, uh, uh, this is not the place for public comment. I'm sorry. But if, if you have a question after the meeting, if you'll talk to our, our city manager, he'll be able to help you out, or get you the right spot. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the council? Mr. Lawson. So you're anticipating a $65 per hour inspection. That'll be the fee, and then, or the fee is in addition to the $65. Size of business, whether it be a single or a small business, it's 
so if business, what can I? I mean, like business, say of mini storage, what can I expect would be my total inspection costs? For a mini storage itself, it would more than likely, depending on the size of it, it $65 an hour. If it's a small one, it'd be $65. If it's a very large one, it could take two hours. It could be double that. Uh, there are some businesses out there that have operational permits, which are specialized processes. Uh, you have to have a lot more knowledge and that to, to review them and inspect them. There'll be a fee for the permit on that, so that could be attached to it. So the intent is to keep this person obviously building at 65 an hour, 8 hour a day, 5 days a That's how you're capable. Well, yes, but it, we, that'll go in place with four different inspectors that you have doing inspections as well. Mr. Dare. <clears throat> I'm looking at this. So before it was just a flat fee. Am I right? It wasn't per hour? Because it's on here. I just want to swear when we're looking at this. So on to $65 an hour here, and then over here says 50, 60, 70. But that wasn't per hour. That was just a fee. It was, it was per hour, but it wasn't based on the per hour full-time equivalent of the of the person's position. That's what that's how I readjusted it to make it where it's more accurately um, bringing in the the revenue for the services provided. So everything on the left is per hour as well. It just didn't yeah. say that. I'm just per hour. Just it would depend on the size of occupancy. My only question. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. How many uh, self inspectors? Self-inspection? We would, uh, it's around 1,200. Um, and what's the cost of that? That would be $25 for, $25. yes. Yes, sir. We put that in place. I know I was, my wife was in business back then. It's been about, oh, it's been quite a few years, but, but we actually stopped it at one point before we did not charge for it. Um, then we lost some personnel as well, and it was very hard to keep up with it at the time. So we stopped the self-inspection program, but we'd like to bring that back. And for the main reason of then we feel like we are getting out to every business in the city of Sparks to ensure that they receive some type of fire and life safety inspection, even if it's them doing it themselves, because we provide them with all the information to do it. You just email the forms and have them self-inspect. Um, is, is that one of the reasons why your, your revenue isn't covering the cost of the inspections is because there's so many uh, people that self-inspect? No, sir. We, we did not charge for it before. Even in the beginning? No, not okay. Much. Okay. Thanks, Chief. How does a business qualify for self-inspection? Very good question. Um, it, it's a business that is more of a low-risk um, type of business, such as a uh, just a business office where when we go in and, and conduct an inspection, we're really the only things we're looking at is an exit light, fire extinguishers, something very simple. So they're uh, considered to us as a low risk type of business. Medium risk ones that have operations, factories, industrial, hazmat, those would fall under our Our language, a, a target hazard type of business, meaning you have much more possibility of something happening in those type of businesses where you have a less probability in a low risk business. And it's a type of business then that with our education, they could conduct, conduct that inspection themselves. And, and I still feel comfortable they'd be safe. So do businesses know that? Is there like a category that you can go to that if I'm opening up um, an office or you know, candy store or something that those businesses would be aware at the time that they're opening or that they purchased a business that that is an option for them uh, to do self inspection versus the those who do need the sixty five dollar an hour is it pretty pretty clear cut and and do business are businesses informed? Uh, that's not a very good question. Actually, that that would be something that I could place on our website. Uh, along with, because we already have the self-inspection forms on the website where they can access them, I could also place that type of information right next to it. So when they do come in to get a business license, they can go right there and see kind of where they fall. 
Yeah, do you have people ever that, that do self-inspection that really you find later were higher risk? I mean, is that an issue that, that they shouldn't have been doing self-inspection that maybe they required uh, for the safety, maybe should have been doing um, your fire inspectors instead of them, them doing it themselves? Is that an issue at all? I, well, I don't know because we haven't gone back to a self-inspection business to see if if it is. Um, we, we have seen some information come in or actually if they don't send back in the self-inspection form, we will send out an inspector to the business to conduct an inspection. Then they get charged the $65. We have found a couple times that there were a few issues that we took care of on the spot, but we learn from that as we go as well. Thank you. Mr. Abbott. Based business classified as like a low risk? Is there anything like that? There's not too many home-based businesses that we actually inspect um, because they're, they're usually just something more simple like a, like a yeah, hopefully not, <laughs> like just a regular business. Um, we do review all of them that come through our office and we assess them at that time to see if it's something that we would put into an inspection program. We would make that assessment at that time. Yes. I would do it off the business in fact statement for the post resolution number three three one seven, amendment resolution number two five seven eight and two seven three five, which require properties, fire inspections, re inspections, fire suppression, and fire by Mr. Dare, seconded by Mr. Smith to approve agenda item 9.6 outlined by staff. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Passage unanimously. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Okay, number 10, public hearing and action items unrelated to planning and zoning, I believe. Uh, Mr. Driscoll. Do, do we have to do that today? Just let them know. <laughs> There's no action. We're good to go. Excuse me. Uh, 9.6, an exempt meeting will be held after the regular council and SRA, the uh, uh, redevelopment agency, meetings adjourn between the council and management representatives for labor negotiation out per NRS 288.220. Does that suffice? Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh... Now. Number 10, Mr. Driscoll, I think you have an announcement yes. on these two. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, thank you. Um, I, I have a, a special announcement related to 10.1 and 10.2 uh, on item 10, and I'll deal with them kind of at the same time. Um, on item 10.1, this is scheduled for a second reading. The first reading of bill number 2721 was held on August 14th, and that a public hearing on that bill is scheduled for today. I am suggesting that it be rescheduled for your next regularly scheduled meeting, which is Monday, September 11th. Also on 10.2, the first reading of the bill 2722 was held on August 14th, and I'm also suggesting that the public hearing and second reading of this bill be conducted at your next regular meeting. However, based on our normal process, um, when we post for public hearing, um, suggest that you um, ask if there's any people that are here specifically on one of these two items or both and allow them to um, have a choice as to whether they'd like to speak today or wait until we hear it on the 11th or they do actually have the option that they could speak now and they could speak on the 11th so that is my suggestion on these two items please that uh, individual error can do it together on both items Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. First, we're going to do, uh, even though this will not be heard today, we are allowing for a uh, public hearing because we have announced it as being a public hearing. So I'm going to open the public hearing on 10.1. Anyone like to speak to the council concerning agenda item 10.1? Okay. Seeing none, I will. Close the public here and bring it back to council. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll go to 10.2. I'll open the public hearing on 10.2. Anyone in the audience like to speak to 10.2 to the council? Okay, seeing none, I'll close 10.2, bring it back to the council. Any questions for the council? No. 
can be taken on this item. So seeing no further discussion, we'll move to 11 planning. We have none comments from the public. Anyone else in the public like to speak under comments from the public? Okay, seeing none, we have comments from the city council, city manager, Mr. Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Steve Driscoll again for the record. I just wanted to again, since even though I dealt with the uh, Landstar Company's request um, regarding the multifamily rezone on Los Altos Parkway, I just want to announce again that we have been requested to extend the public hearing process that we had originally had communicated to the public would be during the month of September. Um, the first and second readings related to that rezoning. Um, the company has asked for a 60-day extension that would put the first and second readings at your meetings in November. Um, their reason was that they've brought on a new, a new consultant to help work with um, trying to answer some of the questions that have been raised by the homeowners in the area as it relates to the potential for this rezoning. This is very common for us. Um, it was very commonplace pre-recession that we would work with applicants and, and help them along. There will be some public notification process that will be mailed out to those who would have regularly received uh, mail um, related to this issue, and we'll do the best we can to communicate with those um, that have an interest in this as it comes back to you in November. I want to assure the public that the same exact process that was going to take place in September will take will take place in November. There will be no deals cut on the side or no one will be cut out of the discussion. Um, we're just allowing um, the developer to answer some questions that have been brought up in the public process so far. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What else? <clears throat> okay, seeing no further business, we are adjourned. I'd like to call to order the Sparks Redevelopment Agency meeting of August 20, 2017 with a roll call. Chairperson Bybee? Here. Agency members Abbott? Here. Lawson? Here. Smith? Here. Martini? Here. Deer? Here. Agency Acting Attorney Eiding? Here. And Chief Administrative Officer Driscoll? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to item number three, public comment. Do I have any public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Moving to item number four, uh, approval of the agenda. Do I have any changes to the agenda or a motion to approve? Second. Motion to approve by Member Dare, seconded by Member Martini. Please vote. Passes unanimously. Item number five. Um, Minutes from the July 24th, 2017 meeting. Any corrections in addi or additions? Or a motion to approve? Move, motion to approve by Member Martini. Do I, do I have a second? Second by Member Smith. Please vote. Passes unanimously. Um, item number six, 6.1, report of claims and bills approved for payment and appropriation transfers for the period June 8th, 2017 through August 9th, 2017. Do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve by Member Dare. Second. Second by Member Martini. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. As is unanimously. Um, item number seven, do I have any comments from the public? Seeing none, do I have any comments from the agency or chief administration officer? Seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Hello. Motion by Member Martini, second by Member Abbott Lawson. Anyway, we are adjourned.